It was reported recently that Tesla has stopped using its multi-billion dollar dojo project, which was meant to train for self-driving. That project is now finished. The person in charge of Tesla's dojo or project dojo is has left the company and it's been shut down. Elon Musk has confirmed that this is accurate and here's why apparently Tesla made this decision. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's fair to point out Tesla is pivoting away from uh, doing some of its own full self-driving stuff in-house. When I say that, I mean they are kind of moving towards getting more work done by outside companies, which I don't think is a bad thing. In fact, I think it's probably a good idea. Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla is stepping back or has cancelled its Dojo supercomputer initiative and it's focusing instead on the company's in-house A15 and A16 chip. So it's focusing more and it's on its future full self-driving chips, which will have incredibly advanced performance. The update was reported by Bloomberg News, which cited people reportedly familiar with the matter, and it, we didn't know if it was true, but Tesla have confirmed it. Bloomberg's Peter Bannon said, well, actually, as per Bloomberg, Peter Bannon, who led Project Dojo, I should say, he'll be leaving Tesla following Elon Musk's decision to shut down the initiative. The publication claimed that Tesla's Project Dojo team has lost about 20 members recently. It sounds like they might have been fired. And the remaining members of the initiative would be reassigned to other data center and compute projects within Tesla. Dojo was meant to help Tesla train its autopilot and full self-driving systems by essentially bringing in huge amounts of video data taken from customers' cars or potentially Tesla vehicles as well that they own and analyzing it, just constantly analyzing it to actually train the train Tesla's full self-driving. And really, I think we all thought that this was going to be a good idea. With this change, though, Tesla will reportedly increase its reliance on external partners for its training hardware. And clearly on Tesla doesn't think it needs Dojo to train its full self-driving, which, I mean, I thought it was a key part of the whole neural network and it was really important, but clearly Tesla believe it's not. These partners though, Tesla's partners, including NVIDIA, AMD, and Samsung, uh, have signed massive deals with Tesla. We're talking, you know, in the case of Samsung, nearly $20 billion. Musk, in a series of posts on X, talked about why it doesn't make any sense for Tesla to divide its resources to scale two different chip designs. And since the company is putting a lot of effort into its A15 and A16 chips, which, which will be used not for training, but in actual products like Optimus and the Cybercab, it was time for Project Dojo to go extinct. It doesn't make sense for Tesla to divide its resources and scale two quite different AI chip designs, said Musk. The Tesla A15, A16, and subsequent chips will be excellent for inference, inference and at least pretty good for training. All effort is focused on that. In a supercomputer cluster, said Musk, it would take make more sense to put many A15, A16 chips on a board, whether for inference or training, simply reduce network cabling complexity and cost by a few orders of magnitude. One could call that Dojo 3, I suppose. The difference in real world performance between A14 and A15 is far more than any chip version I've ever heard of by a lot. It's real good, Musk said in his post. Now, of course, Musk is good at uh, boosting Tesla's future products and stuff, but it probably will be really good. And Tesla's current full self-driving chip is actually, when it was rele released, very good. And it sounds like these new versions will be significantly better. I don't think Musk really adequately explained why Dojo has been shut down. And I think, um, I mean, I get the point, but I didn't think that uh, Dojo was about training a different chip. That's what it sounds like Musk is saying. So that kind of clears things up to some degree. It does sort of explain what's happening at Tesla, but um, yeah, still a little confusing to hear that Dojo was shut down. But interesting to hear how good these new full self-driving chips could potentially be. And it's sort of interesting to see Tesla's come full circle because initially, many years ago, Tesla was using NVIDIA chips for its cars, for its full self-driving, which back then wasn't very good, of course. And then it shifted to its own in-house chip, which was obviously made by Samsung. And it seems to have come full circle now. 
So it's sort of interesting to see that trajectory for Tesla. And that sounds really negative. A lot of people might point that as being a negative, oh, but I don't. I think often when you're going on a journey that's this complicated, this challenging, this difficult, you have to pivot. And sometimes you've got to be wrong. Sometimes you're going to say, well, we learned, we're going to do this now. We learned, we're going to do this now. And often people will say, well, you're an idiot. And they'll criticize you. I've had this many times. They'll say, oh, well, how did you get it so wrong if you're so smart? You know how? But the truth is sometimes the smartest people are the people who are able to accept that um, there's a better way and that they, they got it wrong. And now it's time to move to that better way. To ignore sunk cost bias can be a very, very powerful tool. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. The price and range of the new Tesla Model 3 Plus has been revealed in China. I can give you the numbers WLTP as well. So you've got an idea here on whether or not you should wait for it. It's coming out in September. It's going to have quite a bit more range than the existing Tesla Model 3. I think it's a better choice. The price shows it's actually going to go down in price in comparison to the existing Model 3. So there'll be a price reduction and a lot more range. Yeah, it's in, if you're going to buy a Tesla or a sedan, it's probably a no-brainer. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Model 3 Plus. Same car. Same car as the Model 3 Long Range All-Wheel Drive. All Tesla are doing is taking the front motor off. That's it. That's all they're doing. Range is going to go from around 630 kilometers WLTP in the all-wheel drive version to 700 kilometers WLTP. So it will be the one of the longest range EVs you can buy anywhere in the world, particularly for a price that's relatively affordable. We know the price will be less in countries that get this model than the all-wheel drive version. The price will probably go down by approximately $4,000. So if you can buy currently the Tesla Model 3 all-wheel drive, have a look in your country, the price will go down by about $3,000 for this Model 3 Plus. The range in China is a bit ridiculous, but anyway, there's the all-wheel drive version in China, they say has 753 kilometers of range, which is fantasy, but anyway, that's CLTC, 753 kilometers.